Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will, and I am frantically trying to remove chocolate from the inside of my teeth. We just ate some European cookies. From Walmart. <laughs> Explain that. Um, sure, Kev. <laughs> they sell the cookies at Walmart. <laughs> uh, Guys, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> thought that it's kind of obvious. <laughs> um, welcome back. Thanks for uh, listening or watching. Doing it where you're doing it. However, you're doing it. Um, that's Kevin. I'm Will. Did we do that part? I forget. <laughs> Will's a little tired. He just came from acting class. Yeah, I'm tired. We did do that part. Yeah, we did. I talked about cookies. I did. We almost. always start that. So <laughs> you can follow us on <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We have a website. You can go there. Or you can subscribe on YouTube, which we recommend you do. Or the podcast app, if that's where you found us. That too. We also have a Patreon. Don't go to that. All right. Yeah, we do have a Patreon. If you feel like supporting monetarily, obviously you don't have to. But uh, if you do feel the notion to, by all means, go ahead and check out our Patreon. Yeah. All the links are in the description below. So you can check them all out there. It's only been, I think, about 47 episodes since we mentioned we have a Patreon. Yeah, we so. haven't mentioned that for a long time. We also don't really update the Patreon. So if you guys want that to be a thing, we can we make that a thing. Do you have some sweet pledge goals? We do um, have some really sweet pledge goals. I, forgot I actually about looked at them the other day because I was updating the banner image, but that's the only thing I've updated since we gotten it. We've gotten it. Huh. So yeah. anyway. Look at that. Go uh go do the things. Yeah. Guys, today's episode we are going to be talking about tempo and how to play tempo decks, what all what all of that means. Uh before we get into that, we of course have our random card of the day and then our question of the week afterwards with our sponsor and our crack of packs finishing out this episode. Yes. Uh if you have any tempo questions or anything like that, make sure to leave them in the comment section below and we will answer them. Uh hopefully this video answers them ahead of time, but hopefully. if we do not touch on something, make sure to let us know. So, please ask, share your ideas. We also have some news do we talk about news oh, yeah we'll we should probably touch on that okay we'll do that after the random card of the day guys okay. let's get right into this three two one oh. shuyun the silent okay. tempest this is from fate reforged uh this is actually a rare from fate reforged it is a three two legendary creature human monk mm -hmm. uh for two and a blue with prowess it also has whenever you cast a non-creature spell you may pay either uh some combination of two red two white Red and white, whatever. Hybrid mana. Yeah. Hybrid mana. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you do, target creature gains double strike until end of turn. Uh, obviously, a limited bomb, 100%. Yeah. Um, it much. also sees play in commander. This is actually a commander. Yeah, uh, and that but, would make sense. In a, in a format where you'd want a <clears throat> wide variety of funky effects at your disposal um, in various decks that play blue. It's good in like a kind of go wide strategy sure. where you can have a lot of token generators that are like instants and sorceries and then be able to just give random ones double strike and stuff like that sure. it's pretty good sure. um and again you get all that prowess trigger off of it too which is fantastic right so um this is kind of a weird card in the block simply because it breaks its color wheel mm -hmm. pretty strongly uh however it fit the theme of the time would yeah. you say i yeah. think this was in a cycle of it was a cycle of creatures that yeah absolutely this kind of this um, was the jeskai one but there was right. i believe four Sultai, others and yeah sultai abzan all the yeah, 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 yeah. anafenza i think was the uh abzan yeah you'd be right right yeah makes sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't know mm -hmm. um, uh, it doesn't really it fits limited and commander yeah that's kind of it right? it's not yeah. really it doesn't see any like modern or anything like mm -hmm. that or any uh other of the other eternal formats like yeah. a seer vintage but uh, it is a strong card, I would say, for limited especially, but again, Commander, it's a good place to, to try this out. It's a cheap card, so a lot of people like to pick stuff like this up just to give it a shot for Commander, so why not? It's literally 30 cents, so, yeah, you, you know, it's it's not much. <laughs> you lose pretty much nothing. Exactly. Um, this also worked very well for, um, which is not technically a format anymore, but some people do still play it, Tiny Leaders. This does qualify as a tiny leader, so That's you can true. play it for that. That's true. And uh, your leader deck would then be America Colors. It would be, because yes. Because it's got red and white on the card. Yes. So, Key note possible. there. Um, so it is, I mean, a decent card, but obviously not it's anything too crazy. It's interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. I, 
it's it's just kind of fun. I wish yeah. it was a little better, but I understand that it's not really. So. Yeah, Even it kind of double strike is strong, but double strike is strong, but it's like in the deck you would want a creature with double strike. This doesn't really seem exactly. to fit because it's exactly. focused so much on the non-creature spell side of things mm -hmm. that you want those token generators. You want stuff that's going to give you creatures but not count as a creature. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's a really weird place to be. So not my favorite card, um, no. but it is actually not bad. I you will could, say that. You could, if you were really creative, you could maybe build a janky token deck out of it. I Go might, for it. That might be fun. It would I be want really to explore fun. Explore that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Because that's interesting to me. Go for it. I mm -hmm. think I have like a bunch of those. Because just you can. To no blocks declared, you can respond with a spell mm -hmm. and then give something that would do damage double strike. Yeah, so absolutely. you could maximize that pretty effectively. Yeah, I mean, again, if you have multiple options and sort of a go-wide strategy, you yeah. can actually really, really effectively mm -hmm. win combat most of the time because yeah. either you pick a creature that is going to then kill the opposing creature or you just pick a creature to get optimized damage out of it, yeah. which puts you in a really good place. Mm -hmm. So I am not opposed to it. I no, like it. There's a lot of setup for it, so it's... Again, not practical. Yeah. <sighs> okay, I'm going to stop harping on that. Okay. I, my brain started working, but I'm going to leave <laughs> that alone for a moment. We do want to talk about, uh, just briefly right. touch on uh, some of the things that have been going on in the MTG community. Some updates. Yes. Uh, our last episode, we talked a lot about really just our favorite times in Magic mm -hmm. as sort of a counter argument to all of these sort of divide uh, issues that have been going the on. division. Yeah, there's the been a separatists. huge divide. Um, and if you don't know what's going on, uh, Unsleeved Media or Jeremy has run into a bit of an issue with Wizards of the Coast. It's essentially, regardless of which side you're on, what mm -hmm. has happened is Wizards has given him an indefinite ban uh, yeah. from any sanctioned tournaments or anything like that. It also prevents him from covering tournaments. Um, mm -hmm. He obviously is generally fairly upset about it and taking his actions as he sees fit. Um, we don't want to take too much on the sides of this, no. right? Like we want to stay a little bit objective, but we right. do want to offer to anybody out there. If you have an opinion, go ahead and voice that opinion. You can voice right. it to us. You can voice it to anybody you see fit. Just make sure that you're doing it in a polite way. Um, mm, yeah. I think that's the important thing that a lot of people forget is some people are sending very hateful messages to whichever side they're on or opposing and that's not the way to get things done. If you're looking to actually make a difference or voice your opinion, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But do it in a polite and respectful way. Um, and I think that's the key. So, Yeah. Um, we, we've obviously got our own opinions. Yeah. And we could talk about that. And if you'd like to start a conversation with us specifically. By all means. Yeah, by all means, please do. Um, but ultimately... I don't want to say whether it was a good or bad idea, actually. I've changed my mind. It'll be a mystery. <laughs> you were thinking about it, weren't you? I was. Um, I, might yeah. do, I might do it randomly in the episode. <laughs> and another thing. Yeah. Um, I, I do have mixed feelings about it because it is a complicated issue. It is. Um, at the core of it, though, the health of the community is always a uh, priority. It should be a priority. For the... Uh, what would the word be for wizards? Because it's the magic community. What would the the locus? The the um sire? The epicenter? What's the right word, Kev? Help me out. I I don't know. <laughs> epicenter. Let's go with epicenter. The progeny? I don't know what the right <laughs> word is. It's not that. Anyway, yeah. They they gotta protect their their Yeah. Lungs. I they were basically to sort of sum this up um you know wizards is doing what they feel is correct to keep the community healthy mm -hmm. um and removing anybody who they deem unhealthy to the community uh which some people would see as overstepping their boundaries uh again we're not going to comment on what we think about that but um that's definitely where the argument is and yeah. Uh, Jeremy from MTG Headquarters or Unsleeve Media or The Quartering or how he's got quite a number of channels but yeah. um, is basically doing his best to fight and essentially get wizards to withhold uh, their their stance on this so if anybody really? is his, his 
I've been watching and trying to keep up as best I can with what he's done. And he I, has released... I didn't know he was, like, fighting the band. He is fighting it. Um, in a certain way, he's asking them basically to hmm. stick with their decision. So he's reporting anything that he deems harassment towards him ah. and sending it and reporting it to Wizards. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah. So, again, ah. we'll we'll leave that be. I see. I assume that changes your opinion a little bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's or gives you some perspective. But anyway, yes. So anyway, long story short, guys, there's a whole big issue out there. I encourage you to go research about it. Make sure you understand both sides of this argument uh, before you make your opinions on it. But let your opinions be heard in a very polite way because that really is the key to this. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anything else you want to add to that? <laughs> Yes, but what good is it? It all boils down to not understanding your influence and not taking responsibility for your actions, right? Yeah. But I still maintain that he himself, <clears throat> like I thought... We're throwing our opinions all at you now at this point. <laughs> fine, whatever. I thought originally that I understood why certain parties wanted to leave the community. I get that. Yep. And they have left and, and feel that that was the safer, <laughs> wiser option. I did feel at the time that while Jeremy, mm -hmm. while on Sleep Media, had a hand to play, a massive hand to play, he, the individual himself, wasn't the outright aggressor. He was a jerk. He, but he also was ex exercising his right to free speech. Of course. Which is what the YouTube platform is supposed to be for. Of course. So. Um, not to say harassment didn't happen. Yes. But, and not to say that <clears throat> he was not absolutely a, a, a cesspool with a mouth talking about this stuff. <laughs> he said some disgusting things. You yeah. can go find it. If we're going down that road, we might as well go there. But all that to say, I don't feel as though he was... I didn't agree with his banning. I, I yeah. I I think it. I like that we had this like ten minute intro about how we're not gonna voice any of our opinion, and then well, we're like, well, oh, screw it. Now I learned he's a child. Like you don't. <laughs> as, that that's, that's, that's sort of I, yeah. That's what it boils down to, right? Because if you're not if you're not willing to say, I I understand. I have an influence on my audience, my listeners, and their actions are in. A modic I'm not saying you're responsible for everything your audience does. No. If an it resolves audience member were to say, I think Kevin and Will wanted me to go mug somebody I played it like obviously they not. beat me. Like <clears throat> I'm not responsible for that. Nor is Jeremy responsible for people sending threats or any of this stuff. Right. However, he didn't dissuade it. And yeah. he certainly encouraged an, env an environment where that was forgivable or okay yeah i don't want to say encourage because then it is like sticking the finger at him but yeah yeah but he he didn't do anything to say that you know no you shouldn't be a garbage person just because you sit behind a computer screen my by the way don't be a garbage person <laughs> yeah because you sit like there are still people on the other end of this i yes. know i'm two-dimensional but i'm a person with theory. but youtube will get there no. um i mean probably my thing is um you know, I don't agree with the things that Jeremy has said. I think yeah. he has. I mean, he 100% is exercising his right of free speech. So I can't say that he did anything, technically speaking, illegal or wrong or anything like that. But well, wrong is wrong is a little. But, yeah, but, but legal, no. But he definitely obviously he's made multiple people feel like they were under some sort of harassment from him. And that was sort of his mantra right like that's sort of yeah. been why he's in deep water a lot because yeah. that just happens a lot and i understand that sometimes just the nature of his style of you know his channel the way he's mm -hmm. marketed that it's sort of the on the edge super critical of everything that's just what he does but right. if you receive a message from somebody saying hey i feel like i'm being harassed by you i would I, at least in that position I think I would go back and say, hey, I apologize, first of all, for anything that I said that might have made you feel under that sort of harassed side of things. I wasn't trying to harass you, but I was voicing my opinion and I will, con you know, like 
that's just yeah. sort of how it goes. But like, obviously, people were feeling very threatened by this. That's the problem. Uh, on top of that, I think Wizards potentially overstepped their boundary and got themselves into some hot water because yeah. of anybody, Jeremy's going to be the one to fight it. And I mean, I think that's where the problem. But that's gonna the be. thing is he's not fighting it. He's just being a. a he's just being child. a child a little bit. I mean, you know. Um, but Fine. what I did wasn't bad. Look at all these. Like, it just is a it, interesting situation. I know I am, but what are you thing? It's, yeah, it's ridiculous. I don't know. I don't uh, know. It's interesting. Just um, be calm. That's what be this amounts calm. to, and that was really what our last episode was. The goal of it was to try and get people to think about the good times that they've had with Magic mm -hmm. and try and focus less on the division that's going on right now because, yeah. you know, we're Magic players too, and just because, you know, we create this content and stuff like that, that doesn't mean we're any different than anybody else out there trying yeah. to just enjoy and play the game. And this True divide that. hurts everybody uh, at the end of the day. Yeah. And it's going to hurt yeah. the game as a whole. That's just the fact. Right. Um, people have already left the game out of it. People will continue to do so, and you know this. I don't think is going to be over overnight. You know what I mean? It's going to continue yeah. for a bit, and that's the problem. Yeah. We harped on that for a lot longer than we yeah. anticipated. That's all I want to say. If you if you have <laughs> if you would like us to talk about that more, I suppose we could. But yeah, I mean, I would say I message know. us directly so yeah. we can. I, think I you don't know where we stand. If you threaten to kill me. Just don't, okay? I know, right? Come okay. on. Okay. We're, you guys. We're not big enough for that. Oh. Um, <laughs> no. All right. We're going to move off of that. We've harped on that long enough. Blech. Um. Blech. Again, if you guys okay. have opinions, this is a I'm safe sorry place to I talk about them. Up. But yeah. Um, we're going to talk about tempo today. <laughs> right. So actually playing a game. <laughs> Which this Back is. Back to what actually. Yeah. First of all, let's also keep this in perspective. This is a child's card game. Yeah. Um, no, no. <laughs> 13 and up, Thank sorry. <laughs> it's a teenager's card. It's a teenager's card game. Let's just keep it in perspective. Anyway, <laughs> we do want to talk about tempo uh, and tempo decks, tempo plays. How do you go about playing a tempo deck? And what is a tempo deck? Yeah. Uh, because, you know, we've in the past done series about aggro and about control decks and sort of how to pilot them, how to run them. Don't think um, we did a tempo one. Did, we do, did you check? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we haven't done a tempo oh, one. Thank I God. hope so. Um, anyway... <laughs> I guess there's always time yeah. to check. <laughs> hey, fourth wall. <laughs> fourth wall being broken. Um, anyway. anyway, guys, we want to talk about tempo. And what is it, first of all? That's really the big question. Um, and technically speaking, this may not be exactly what you expect, but uh, a tempo deck is basically a deck that deploys its threats at a higher speed. Than, yeah. That's what you're trying to do than the opponent, right? So you're, technically speaking, trying to be the speedier deck or uh, trying to get your threats out early. And so that being said, that kind of classifies aggro decks as tempo decks. However, it's not really in the way that we generally think, right? Right. And at least not here, yeah. how they resolve, especially. You, you and I have different, <laughs> Very different. concepts. Even, <laughs> even Parks and I have different concepts of tempo plays and such. We got into that the other night. Did you really? Yeah. I mean, oh. we when... Uh, we were teaching our friend how to play. Yeah. We talked about um, what I considered to be a tempo mm -hmm. play. Um, and it kind of was, kind of wasn't. It's an abstract way to think, and this is not necessarily a specific uh, archetype in Magic, as we come to find out. Mm -hmm. There's there's decks that fit this a little better, but it's not necessarily a hard and fast rule. So it's open it's open to discussion, yeah. and it's an important thing to consider when you are deck building, um, thinking about the meta. Too. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, so basically, uh, the idea is outpacing your opponent in different ways of the game. Um, and the reason aggro fits into this sort of tempo category is because they are outpacing other decks. It's right. just on board, right? right? They're playing very early game creatures that hopefully win out the game very quickly. Uh, Mid-range decks also tend to be very tempo-focused decks. Um, right. We think of Jund as being a very good tempo deck uh, just because it's stripping down the opponent's resources and getting ahead in that way, not necessarily mm -hmm. on board. Increasing um, its value, decreasing the opponent's value. Exactly. Right. And so that's sort of what it amounts to is sort of widening that gap in some way, whether it be through damage or card advantage or something along those lines. Board state. Board state, um, yeah. 
even spells in the graveyard for example is one dex i think of death shadow yeah pretty um, exactly a, a, a crazy fast turn for them is a turn to grow mag angler which is very possible <laughs> yeah 100 that's mean it's super mean yeah. <laughs> um so some ways that we commonly think of uh tempo decks playing out drawing cards card advantage is a really big aspect to what we think of generally as a tempo deck and so mm -hmm. cards that are going to draw you cards that also sort of have some sort of effect or some sort of stall for the opponent so thinking of cards in modern right now remand remand That's is a, a fantastic tempo play because it sets them back a turn it's a soft counter right they're not actually hard countering the spell it's not going to the graveyard it's not being exiled right. it's going back into their hands so they get to replay it however if you remand a turn to two drop, that sets them back a turn. Right. So you're getting ahead on turns, plus you get to draw a card back. And so you're not losing any cards. You're not technically gaining any cards mm -hmm. either, but you are setting them turn a turn back and you're continuing and moving forward yeah. in your game plan. It's important with remand specifically to uh, consider not the value of the spell <clears throat> you are countering, but the time yes. that you're countering. Because exactly you're setting them back an entire yeah. turn. That's a, um, a huge, huge point. I'm glad you mentioned yeah. that. But you can that is essentially uh an ETB effect that doesn't harm your board. That's mm -hmm. um a creature with haste that you have an open field, no <laughs> blockers that you don't have to worry about free damage coming in. Yeah. It's some it's something like that. It's not always like, oh, I remanded their shield red. Oh man! No, you don't get that thing. You yeah. don't want to save a remand. You want you want to use remand and you want to use like it remand. in the early game to just to, to get you ahead. Exactly, um, because the power of remand again, <clears throat> you're not removing anything. They still have their card. Yeah, and it replaces itself, which is great. But you don't really get any value necessarily yeah, yeah. from card specifically. Mm -hmm. Just time. Yeah, which is, I mean, that's kind of what Hugely. tempo means, yeah that's exactly right? what you're trying to do so it's perfect um yeah. and another example sort of more in the limited environment we see this more in limited certainly with iconic masters it's been very popular is repeal uh repeal yeah. is a great card as well it is sort of like a remand and that you play it you draw a card and you also mm -hmm. get some sort of effect that puts something back in the hand right and in this case you get to return a permanence back to the to the owner's hand which it's is big. fantastic it's right big, yeah um that is absolutely absolutely fantastic it sets mm -hmm. them back a turn it also draws you a card and forwards your game plan yep um it's perfect yeah it's kind of more expensive remand right it's two colorless one blue. it's one blue and x oh because it's mm -hmm. cmc that's yeah. right um, That's right. So it really is a fantastic card. There's it's also flexible. it is very flexible as well as remand. You can remand your own spell. Yeah. And I've actually seen this in pro plays a lot where somebody will play a spell, and the opponent will either counter it or try and do something, and they just repeal it or they remand it back to their. Mm -hmm. And so they get to draw a card, and they still have all the cards in their hand that they yeah. wanted to play. So it kind of doesn't matter. Um, flexibility being very important always. So. Yes things to think about uh as well as any other just draw spells right like you know ponder brainstorm all these cards are fantastic because it gets you ahead in the card advantage race right we, um, we've talked card we've advantage talked extensively about that so and it should keep being harped on card advantage wins you games <laughs> exactly more, and more that's why so. control decks are good and tempo decks ding ding <laughs> Really? I don't know why I said ding ding, but that's what I went with. Anyway, removing oh, and locking down opponents' threats. <laughs> We're going to gloss over that one. Um, <clears throat> and this can be done in many different ways. Obviously, removal in the way of bolt or fatal push, things like that come to mind very quickly because it's a very efficient way to deal with a very strong creature. In modern, fatal push hitting a death shadow that's at like 8-8 eight, eight, or 9-9. Nine, nine. Mm -hmm. For one mana, you just killed an 8-8 eight, eight or a 9. That's fantastic, right? Yeah. That's efficiency you're getting ahead um bolt also being very good and flexible and that it hits a wide number of creatures not so many in modern anymore although it is still very good yeah but it also bolts to the face and gets you ahead in the damage race or the the board state so it sort of right. is a little bit more flexible than fatal push in that regard um however there's also other ways to strip down your opponent's resources and this is why we see jund or uh grixis control decks being really really good things like thought seize or inquisition uh, you're basically trading up. It's a one-for-one one trade, but you're trading up because you're trading a card that costs you one mana mm -hmm. for a card that potentially is either a win or a game-changer for them. Yep. That is huge. 
that's why turn one thought sees is will f- will's favorite play it right? is it is my 100%. absolute favorite play in all of magic it's pretty awesome it feels good especially when you get like a combo piece it feels fantastic there's... I think we mentioned that in the Thoughtseize spotlight, didn't we? That it was your favorite play. Yeah, I think if we didn't, let's do it now. It's <laughs> I definitely did on the article when I wrote it. That's Good. all I know. It is my favorite. Yeah, it's my favorite play. Um, you have you have information for the next seven turns. Yeah, there you go. It's perfect. It's, it it really is a great card. It's a mean spy network. There you go. Think about it like that. <laughs> information being very important in tempo as well. Um, very much so. Also, in limited, we see cards like Frost yeah, Links. It's huge in limited. Temple yes. principles, that is, are huge. Um, and we see this sort of effect a lot in the way of tapping down creatures. Mm-hmm. That's really the popular one. Ojitai's Breath was in Iconic Masters uh, recently, but Frost Links, I believe, also was. Uh, both at three mana, both do essentially the same thing where mm-hmm. they tap a creature down and it does not untap during the player's next untap step. Right. And so it's essentially like kind of returning it to the hand right like it's dead for a turn. in a way yeah doesn't do anything for yeah. that turn and so you're locking him down you're getting a little bit ahead on board and you're also stalling them out a little bit mm-hmm. that's just the goal sure um granted they do not have to replay it like if you were to repeal it or something right. like that they don't so, have to spend more mana exactly they're not turn playing putting it, more but... resources into it but it is fantastic yeah um it's, it's very good and then the last thing is really deploying your threats that's really mm-hmm. really important uh, the classic example that we see in Modern and even Legacy and Vintage, Delver, is the perfect tempo deck, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it really, really is. It's a very yeah. cheap threat, it's efficient, favorites. and it has the backup cards like Remand and things like that that not only synergize very well with mm-hmm. Delver, but also just keep you ahead in that tempo race. Right. Um, Dark Confidant is another good example of a card that's very cheap, not super powerful, but does represent a clock, and it gains you card advantage as you go along. Uh, obviously it does set you back on the life uh, strategy of if course. you're trying to yeah. race that can be a little hazy but you build your deck with at a low cost or something like that which most tempo decks a- aspire to do i guess i would say sure. many of them do, um yeah you know it it sort of works out um so basically the mm. the big takeaway here is effic- efficiency for a very low cost and just right. do really good things with these low cost cards, things like Thoughtseize, things like Dark Confidant, Delver, Remand. All of these cards are super, super powerful, mm-hmm. uh, but for a very low cost. And it's not a hard counter, like Remand is not a hard counter, but it's a soft counter that gets you ahead. And that's the important yeah. thing, right? My my biggest takeaway, my biggest thought on tempo principles are honestly very similar to control principles. And that's if if you're smart, if you're paying attention <laughs> to the past, or if you're quizzical, you'll notice like all we talked about was efficient removal, uh, board presence, and card advantage. All these are pretty basic principles. Tempo just is a concept to focus on them more. Mm-hmm. And tempo decks maximize this idea. Yep. So tempo for me, if I'm deck building, really comes down to I have X is my win con. I can't deploy X until this thing happens. What are some cost-efficient ways I can maintain my presence in the game, not let them goldfish and win? Mm-hmm. Uh, or a remand, solid removal, yeah. good counters, um, hand destruction. All that stuff will keep me in an advantageous position in that they are deploying their strategies yeah. quickly. Yeah. And, and this is just a, a solid concept in many competitive games, um, but deck building, magic theory craft, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, especially. Um, so tempo... Tempo decks are pretty simple, but they have a fatal flaw in that, and this is my opinion speaking, mm-hmm. um, in that take Infect, for example, or um, an aggro Red Deck Wins, for example, we've said they are tempo decks technically? Just even, in not the way you would generally think right, of a tempo deck. Right, not that we deck. think. Their tempo is, <clears throat> it, it's very quick. They deploy and get to their like optimal yeah if their optimal state very quickly however if you surpass that point they're gone they the later the game goes on the less and the, the lesser their chance to win essentially yeah. so tempo decks can suffer from this um one thing it relates to tempo and this is why i'm bringing it up a tempo <laughs> play though a tempo play not a tempo deck not a tempo yeah. strategy a tempo play uh is a way to get out of that if a board's at parity if um someone has a field of creatures you can't attack into if they have um uh, i don't know if they're sacking guys getting guys but something like that a tempo play shutting off a tool 
an engine for a turn. Mm-hmm. That's what I think of as a tempo play. Sure. Does that make sense? No, that makes sense. Um, and even sometimes anthem effects. Mm-hmm. Anthem effects can be used as a tempo play. Mm-hmm. Limited more so. You don't really play yeah, of anthem course. effects in Constructed, but something like that. White weenie, kind of. Um, yeah, Ellis you, Nord. I guess you'd want it on a <laughs> stick, though, right? Ellis Nord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You just said that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and something I that... I had more... I don't think... All right. Yeah, I'm good. Go you good? You Go good? Ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, something I did want to bring up because it's very a lot of people kind of had a hard time defining a control deck versus a tempo deck. It makes sense. And it does make sense because a lot of the effects are fairly similar. Mm-hmm. However, there is a, f- a fairly imp- a fairly prominent difference, I guess I would say, and that a control deck at heart, a true control deck, is looking to counter and eventually stabilize to win the game, whereas they're Mm -hmm. and they're still kind of letting the opponent do a few things like it's like "Eh, it's okay it's not gonna impact the board hugely so i'll be okay with it you're sacrificing until you stabilize early advantage exactly there is no early play too much except for countering things like that um tempo plays are not trying to like get to the point where they really really have to stabilize they just want to keep ahead of the race the entire time however just in different ways because that's very easy to get that can that a little bit mixed up and i know i i do that pretty regularly but yeah. um that's just something to keep in mind that there is that's why we see tempo and control decks not just control decks or not yeah. just tempo decks that's a great point control decks are okay sacrificing a little bit of life here a little bit mm-hmm. of life there to some creatures because they know they've got that um inevitability mm-hmm. built into their deck they have that bomb that planeswalker whatever it is yep. tempo decks don't and yep. you're exactly right is they have an optimal turn that says all right, I need to either have the win in the bag here, be threatening uh, lethal damage or something like that here. So I need to use my counters pretty much on anything. Yeah. That's why I said Remand isn't a spell you save if you're a tempo deck, Yep. if that's the concept your deck is behind, because you just need to claw ahead in small increments. Exactly. And we do see combinations between tempos and control Mm -hmm. decks in a lot of ways. Um, American control. Yeah, yeah, exactly. American control in modern is a very good example where they, in the early games, they're just playing remands. They're just playing draw spells and things like that. But in the late game, they do get to that stabilized point. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Where they play a huge bomb of some kind. Um, And then there's sort of the flip side on American control where some of them don't really have a huge bomb. They yeah. just have snapcasters, uh, cryptic commands to kind of keep their opponents at bay and things like that. And that's where two for ones come in. And that's why two for ones are so good. Those are the tempo plays to make. Honestly. Um, yes. When you can flash in a snapcaster at the end of your opponent's turn, bolt their dark confidant with the bolt you already had in the graveyard, and then swing in the next turn for two. You just had a really good turn. <laughs> yeah, that that's, is nice. That's crisp, right? Like, that's Ooh, what you want. That's crisp. That's um, a great way to play that. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, that's great. And that's why cards uh, like Cryptic Command are so, so good mm-hmm. and so powerful because it's a two-for-one on its own because it immediately yep. gets two effects. You can either counter something and draw a card, counter something and bounce a board. Like, mm-hmm. you have so many options and that's why Cryptic Command is the powerhouse card that it is. That's why yeah. we see it so prominently. Um, and that's why it commands such a interesting converted mana cost of one and three blue, right? Like, yeah. that's so not normal for a converted mana cost. But, you're, you're but it, that's right. why we have to have it, because it's a powerful card. Yeah. And it's a two-for-one by itself. Yep, it commands such an interesting uh, effect. Yeah. Effects, plural, really. Mm-hmm. Um, that threatening Cryptic is something that pro players... We'll always play around. If you always represent it. Um, so <laughs> just me. some things to think about, guys. Uh, this is sort of a very basic overview of what tempo uh, yeah. decks do and what tempo decks are all about. Um, so, yeah, I I don't think there was anything else that I wanted to harp on too much. I don't believe so. It's a concept. We talk about deck building concepts all the time. It's mm-hmm. something that everyone should consider to some degree. Some decks, it doesn't really matter that much. Um uh living in for example i don't think matters that much you don't have yeah. any answers in living in no um you just have your deck and you do it yeah storm doesn't really matter that much to me because you just kind of want to combo decks yeah, yeah they're not they don't really <laughs> need to worry about tempo because they goldfish most of the time until they can get their combo off but if you're 
and it's not an insult to say this don't take it that way if you're an <laughs> honest deck and you don't have some busted win con like ad nauseum um it should be something that you think about yeah at least a modicum yeah a little bit. absolutely a snitch a skosh a skosh consider it a skosh i like that i don't know if i'm using that word right i heard someone say it the other day and i love it <laughs> so i've been i've been saying it so so much like someone brought snacks to class tonight I'm like will do you want any i'll just, i'll take a skosh i'll just did anybody else look at you funny when you said it? Everybody. Oh, okay. Everyone's or were they all now. acting? Everyone's always acting, Kevin. <laughs> no, we're not. That's not true. <laughs> oh, so we're acting right now. I don't want to think about it. Oh, all we right. We are. We are. I'm not like this normally. I am. Yes. I'm charismatic. Totally and s- no, I'm sexy normally. That's what I am. Not. Yeah. 100%. Guys, <laughs> if you have any questions about Zenfo. <laughs> Let us know in the comment uh, section below. Uh, uh, if you don't feel like commenting, direct message us. If you don't feel like direct messaging us, yeah. email us. If you want to pick a fight, direct message us. Yeah. That's what I'll if say. you have a death threat, go for it. Yeah, um, message me. If you can make me quake in my galoshes, I'll I'll be impressed. just a skosh though. <laughs> That's all you gotta do. Why did I say galoshes? I don't know, man. You're in a weird mood tonight. Those are shoes, right? Yeah. What are galoshes? I don't freaking know. I don't want to say boots because we're from the South and I, I'm self-conscious about that. So my brain what? picked something. I was talking and I couldn't pause. <laughs> so I said galoshes. Sue me. Threaten me. Send him me. a death threat. Fight It'll me, be great. Jeremy. Uh. All right, so here's what I need <laughs> you to do. What's up? We're going to go over our question of the week. All right, bring it. Uh, before we do that, Will, I'm going to give you a task. Bring it. Which might prove to be a bit difficult I'm in a, this situation. No, I got it. I need you it's already done. to think of the next question of the week. Oh, crap. Because I didn't prepare that. I was busy setting up stuff. <laughs> All right, guys. Here is the deal. The last question of the week uh, was in ex- in sort of response to all of the negative stuff that's been going on in the community we wanted to know what your favorite experience in magic has been um we've had a number of responses all of which were awesome some people uh were just saying meeting friends and getting to travel and sort of uh play with some some awesome people which is fantastic um let's see oh this person was awesome mason undead on instagram my favorite memory is when me and my friend bailey we're hanging out, and he was teaching me magic, and I won my first game of magic against him. That's a good feeling. It, when you yes. win your first game, especially yeah. against someone who is an experienced player, is fantastic. Uh, yeah. I love that. Uh, let's see. Uh, when I first heard of MTG, my brother and my cousins helped me get to know the game. Me and my cousins learned the game together and are always going to FNM still, which is fantastic. That's by Bowen's A Beauty. That's really cool. Um, uh, Brocaston. Uh, traveling to play at a GP, fantastic. Man. I would love to do that, what but I have feeling. not. That's really cool. Yeah, dude, that'd be awesome. Uh, Alphagram999, destroying my friends with my burn deck and getting my first win at epic loot against a well-structured elves deck. Burn beating that. elves, that's pretty awesome. Uh, is that a matchup? <clears throat> Which one's favored in that, do you think? Um, Probably elves, because they have a little more longevity, I would think. I think you're right. <clears throat> they can stabilize pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. Well, all their threats draw them into more threats. Exactly. Whereas, like, red more deck wins. More life. Yeah, exactly. So, well, it, elves are so flexible. Right, right. Yeah, elves are super good. Uh, playing casual games with friends. There you go. That's perfect. Um, good times. The Grim Die. I'm going to give a little shout out to this guy because he messaged us. I'll go ahead and read his, uh, his comment. My older brother and I made a game style called God Magic. Three decks at the same time. It was always <laughs> this epic. This sounds so cool. Um... He unfortunately, uh, two years ago, was murdered, and to this day, those are my favorite magic memories. Um, he, we actually talked to him directly. Uh, first of all, thank you for sharing this. Uh, yeah. I'm assuming because it was on a public post that this is okay to share, um, but he direct messaged us afterwards. We're going to try and set up some private games and actually Skype him in mm-hmm. and just kind of hang out with him uh, because obviously that's very, very rough but also because he holds on to these awesome memories of this awesome game. Yeah. And I think that is incredible. I Absolutely incredible. Whenever something like that happens, very small things that connect you to somebody 
or some time uh, are vastly they're they're so meaningful you can't you can't overstate it um so sharing that is big first that is yeah um so i am very personally very glad that a game can connect you in that way to yeah your, absolutely uh to your brother and of course sorry for your loss That's absolutely tough. absolutely um, um but we it's big yeah it is big um and i think that should hopefully put things into perspective a little bit but that also show how awesome this game can be uh because again holding on to those memories of somebody that important to you after so many years of such a terrible terrible thing to happen um to be able to hold on to that is fantastic so yeah. grim die thank you for sharing that thank everybody else as well for sharing their personal stories with us we enjoy that um i really like the personal side of things i think I it's too. really fun to connect with people I so um, and Grimdie, we are looking forward and planning on messaging you back about Skyping into that game. Yeah. Uh, we would like to do that. We've already talked to him a little bit about it, so we just need to set up a time. Let us know which one of us you want to destroy. Will. Um, <laughs> yes. It'd be easier. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Um, All right. So, Will. Yeah, buddy. Question of the week. What'd you come up with? Oh, right. Um. <laughs> wait a minute. I had it. I did. I had did it. Did you actually have one? Yes. Oh, of course. What is the best unstable land art? Oh, What's your favorite? That's a good one. I have mine. I know my favorite. Do you really? Yeah. What? Uh, I'll ask you off camera. Okay. I don't. I don't want you to sway anybody, because everybody's gonna want to have the same opinion. Do you think as you. I have that kind of potential? That kind of influence? Do you? I don't know. Do you want to start a religion? A little. All right. Um. <laughs> It's going to be uh, <clears throat> the name of our religion. Mm. Uh, bonus points if you can name our religion. <laughs> our cult. Oh, man. Our, we're starting a cult. I realized uh, the other day also, this is so unrelated to anything. Um, I downloaded the Twitter app for the first time in my entire life to manage our Twitter account because we don't manage our Twitter account. <laughs> and I figured, hey, let's maybe try and start that. Who's <laughs> Yeah, all I'm saying, Will, I do a lot on this podcast. Look, buddy, I got to carry the personality department. You're not doing a good job this episode. No, 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 no. <laughs> They're not all going to be winners. <laughs> um, uh, what do I always say? Uh, what do I always say? What's my phrase? Oh, oh, quantity finds quality. Oh, yeah. You try for everything. Pick the low-hanging fruit. And the higher. And the higher. Whatever. Anyway. Sure. In Whatever, downloading Kevin. the Twitter app, this is so not news to anybody but me. You can do polls on the Twitter app. Yeah, by the way. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, so with a question like this, we can actually poll the results Ooh. on Twitter. Go follow us on Twitter. Yeah, um, guys. They will have do a the poll. Thing. We can't poll on Instagram, can we? No, we cannot. Yeah, so go um, to so yeah. Twitter. Please do. Please do. Um, <laughs> What's wrong? Nothing. That What's was, up, Kevin? Took me by surprise. You don't Will. like a tweeter? What's wrong with a tweeter? Hmm? Cool whip. All right. <laughs> Sponsored. <laughs> uh, do you think Seth cool, just walks in. Do you think cool whip is copyrighted? Uh, probably. That would, that would shock me. But uh, it also I mean, kind of wouldn't. You can't. I don't know if you can. Someone I'm copyrighted no the happy birthday song. That's stupid. And then someone wrote, actually, it was one of the... Uh, um, Such a rambly episode. I love it. I know. I forgot their name. Oh, Bratz and Bretta. Um, Joe Bratz. Joe Bratz wrote um, Happy Birthday to You in the music's public domain, but the words aren't. So he just rewrote the words in like some very strange illusion to to a Egyptian river. It's all on YouTube. You can see it. Um, anyway, he un. We'll he link that video. A thing just fell over there. <laughs> Piss off, ghost. <laughs> that was so creepy. All right. Anyway, sorry. It's in the public domain. So now. rambling. You can sing a happy birthday. Good job, guys. I need to go, go to that. sleep. Yeah, Kevin. You really do. All Why right, are you guys. Those packs, dude. Coming to our final segment, we have our Crocker Pack sponsored oh, by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. <laughs> guys, they have done so much for us. We cannot thank them enough. 
Uh, but if you would yes. like to shop with him or if you'd like to go hang out with him, they are 20 minutes south of Charlotte in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Um, they also have a Facebook group linked in the description below. I would encourage you to check them out. Uh, Clamp is a good friend of ours. He is also the uh, curator of the store, and he does a fantastic job, uh, as well as our friend Andrew, who helps out over there. Yep. Does an awesome job as well. So, Shout out to you, uh, We, of man. course, have our goal cards. Mine is It Lamont, Growing Rights of It Lamont. Yours is? Carnage Tyrant, the big bad. I didn't get mine. I did not get mine either, although I did get a land. I got Dowsing Dagger, which is an interesting card. I guess these are the new buddy lands, aren't they? Mm-hmm. And there's a battlefield tapped, unless you control a I mean, they're reprints. Planes. They're great. Oh, of course they're reprints. I'm stupid. I actually really like the art on the new ones, though. It's I do, fantastic. too. I, I mean, I've said before, I like all the art in this um this block. Yeah, the art's actually really fantastic. Um, So, I got an opt. That brings up bad memories. Um, Does it? Just of our episode. That oh, about that article. Threw shade at some people. Um, I don't even know if we're right. I thought about it. We're right. Never mind. We're always right. What do you no, mean? We're not always right. Uh, Dowsing Dagger, as much as I like this card, is not the pick. Um, It's just not... It's too slow. But the only real options I have are River Sneak, which is a 1-1 Merfolk, and Unfriendly Fire, which is a deal 4 damage target creature player for 5 mana. I think I would play it safe and stay open and probably okay. take the Unfriendly Fire. Yeah, that's um, wise. The River Sneak, I think kind of pigeonholes you a little bit into merfolk because it really is only good in merfolk so yeah. i um i actually got a lot in the way of tempo plays oh to, so on to theme. speak of our theme uh depth did i see a lightning strike in here you did okay lightning strike is exceptional i'm just not i'm not taking it out because i want to talk about these yeah yeah depths of desire is a bounce spell and you get to create a treasure that you can sack for mana um for three return target creature not permanent though um, and it's instant too. Yeah, it's nice. I think though, Siren Storm Tamer might be my pick. I like that card. I also got Siren's Ruse and Verdant Rebirth. I love Verdant Rebirth because this is definitely my kind of sneaky, <laughs> haha, no, you don't kill my thing kind of play. Um, but Siren's Ruse is cool too. It's a flicker effect. And if you flicker to pirate, you can draw a card. But the Storm Tamer is a flyer for one, and I love my 1-1 one, one flyers for one. It is actually really good. Plus, it's got upside. Pay a blue, sack it, you can counter a spell that targets a creature you control. I might awesome. take Lightning Strike above it, though. Lightning Strike is fantastic, and honestly, that's probably that's the That's probably the pick. safe pick, I think I it's the, I think it's the best pick, yeah. but Storm Tamer. It's, it's a great card. It's yeah. really, really good. Um, I think I said this last time. I'm really ready to get off of this set. I am ready to shake up the meta. That's what I'm ready to do. Well, that's not gonna happen. Shake, um, shake, <laughs> shake, shake. Copyright. Shake, shake, <laughs> shake, shake. Don't sue me. Shake, 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 shake. It's shake. The word shake is in the public domain. Shake, shake, shake guys, it. <laughs> guys, we really appreciate you hanging out with us. And yeah, yeah, especially if you made it this long through Kevin's gonna, nonsense. Yeah, guys, I'm so sorry. What a freaking d bag. Didn't know you're still here. Oh, this is going to be an interesting episode to edit. All right, guys. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to like and comment down below. Let us know what you th yeah. what your thoughts are, either on the Jeremy stuff mm -hmm. going on or just on tempo decks. Yeah, we'd prefer to talk about tempo decks, but if you really want us to talk about the other stuff, then I guess that's cool. I I wouldn't mind talking about it. I would be okay with it. I'll but fight you. I'm just saying, let's keep it let's keep it in perspective. But. I will fight you politely. I will say I'm sorry, but I disagree with you respectfully. I take no pleasure in this, but I believe that you are wrong. <laughs> or perhaps that you're right. I am open to the fact, but I disagree with it. I would like to enter a friendly conversation. Perhaps we can come to some modicum of decency. <sighs> so, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kevin, say your goodbyes. <laughs> Guys, thank you for sticking around. Really quick, also subscribe to our channel. Do that. Christ. My name's Will. My name's Kevin. This has been It Resolved. <laughs>